Collins in. I brought down some breakfast. I thought we might have it together. Yeah. That was very thoughtful of you. Has Mrs. Johnson been in yet? Yes, a while ago. She'll be back later. She certainly does wonders with a dust cloth. I'm surprised you managed as well as you did. Oh, I managed very well. I see you've made a fire. Yes. Yes, I love a nice fire. There's something so soothing about it. Well, tell me, is David up? Yes, he got up a little while ago. Does he want to see me? Well, he's, he's still awfully excited from last night. And... Oh, that's all right, Vicky. You don't have to make excuses for him. I'm sure that he will want to see you after he gets over this stage fright. Well, I hope you're right. I've waited so long to see him. It sometimes seems like an eternity. I know. You see, he's missed you as much as you've missed him. Before I came back to Collinsport, did he ever talk about me? Oh, he talked about you all the time. Well, what did he say? He told me how much he loves you and how much he wanted you to come back. Did he? Certainly did. That's why I'm sure that, well, that, that this thing is, is just a phase. Vicky, tell me about him. What would you like to know? Anything that comes to mind. His favorite color. What he likes for breakfast. I want to know everything there is to know. Well, his favorite color is blue. That's my favorite color. And as for breakfast, I think he'd be quite happy to have hot dogs and hamburgers every morning if he could. Well, that sounds typical. David is very typical in, in lots of ways. But he's more sensitive than most children. And I think he's much more intelligent. Well, that's very good to hear. Vicky, hmm? I wonder if you could do me a favor. What? Could you get me a lock of his hair? A lock of his hair? Oh, well, I know it's an odd request. But I, I have a piece of his baby hair. I, I keep it with me all the time in this locket. Oh, that's a beautiful locket. Thank you. It's a family heirloom. Roger gave it to me on our wedding night. Oh. I've kept it with me all the time I was in the sanitarium. I suppose you know that I was there for a very long time. Yes, I, I had heard it mentioned. Well, you don't have to be embarrassed about it. It's perfectly all right for me to talk about it. In fact, it's very good therapy. I, I'm not embarrassed. While I was there, Sometimes it was my only contact with reality. It meant I had a son somewhere outside those walls. That he was growing up and, and waiting for me to come back to him. <sighs> Vicky, if only I could win David's love and acceptance. That's all I want. Well, perhaps if, if you came back to the house with me now, you could talk to him. No, he doesn't want to see me. I don't want to force myself on him. I just upset him or frighten him or... If only there was some way that the two of you could meet that would be easy and, and natural, as if it was an accident. Yes, wait a minute, I do have a plan. Well, what is it? Every afternoon after David studies, I take him for a walk between 4.30 and 5. Yes? You could plan to meet us on that walk. Well, if you, if you think it wouldn't upset him, I... No, no, because it wouldn't seem planned at all. It would just be an accident. I'm sure he wouldn't be upset. <sighs> well, where could we meet? Uh, the greenhouse. How about on top of Widow's Hill? Why Widow's Hill? Well, I used to take David there when he was a little boy. He liked to watch the ships. I just thought that... Possibly he might be more willing to accept me in a familiar surrounding. All right. Then we'll meet at a little after 4.30 on Widow's Hill. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate your help. Well, I, I want David to understand and accept you. He needs someone. He needs a mother. And I need him. You have no idea how much. In fact, no one knows.
we going? To Widow's Hill. Why'd you bring me up here? To look at the ocean. I like to look at the ocean, don't you? Sometimes. I wonder how many people have died here. That's a morbid thought. Well, lots of people have, according to the legends. I know all about the legends, but I don't want to talk about anything that depressing. Why? Because you're afraid of the, the legends? Because I don't. Oh. Oh, but look at the place. There are big ones today. David, come back from there. You're making me nervous. I won't fall. David, come back here. Okay. You know, sometimes you're the biggest scaredy cat. Scaredy cats don't have accidents. Neither do I. It's always the first time. Oh boy! Look at those gulls! Did anyone ever catch a seagull and keep it for a pet? I wouldn't know. That's what I was thinking I might do. Oh, that's very interesting, David. Well, it's boring hanging around up here. Let's go home. Oh, wait a minute. Why? Oh, look, is, is not a ship out there. Where? See, right there on the horizon. Oh, yeah. I think it's a ship. But I can't make it out. I wonder what kind of ship it is. Oh, it's probably an ocean liner going around the world. Going to all the far off places. Maybe it is. You know what I'm going to do when I grow up? What? I'm going to get on an ocean liner and go all around the world to all the far off places. Are you going to go to Madagascar? <laughs> you remember we used to talk about far away places, David? When you were a little boy. You used to ask me about Madagascar. You liked the sound of the word. Do you remember that? I still know lots of things about faraway places. You do? Mm hmm I could tell you all about them if you want me to. Come here. No! David, be careful. David, come to me, please. No, I won't. I won't. David, look out. Come back, David. David, come to me, please. No. David, come to me, please! David! Help! 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 David! Help! David! David, stay where you are. Give me your hand. That's right. That's right. Come on. David, it's all right now. Nothing's gonna happen. Oh, Miss Winters. Why did you do that, David? I don't know. It was a terrible thing to do. You almost went over. I was so scared. What were you scared of? There's nothing to be frightened of, David. Yes, there is. What is it? It... it's... I don't know. There was something about her eyes. This is the second time you've run away from your mother. You mustn't do that. She's come such a long way just to see you. And now she thinks you don't love her. I don't know. Look at her. She's crying. She's crying because she loves you. And you won't even let her touch you. Do you really think so? I know it, David. There's one thing that's very important in her life, and that's you. Now, you've told me a lot of times that you wanted your mother to come back. Now she's here, and you act as if you don't want to see her. There's just something I can't explain. I know just what it is, David. It's the dream. You have it too much on your mind. But, David, your mother isn't a dream. She's real. She's here, and it's time for you to go to her. 
and give her the love you've both been searching for. Mother? Mother? Don't you want to look at me? I don't want you to see me crying, David. I'm sorry I made you cry. Oh, it, it wasn't just you alone. It was many things that are very hard to understand that made me cry. And will you stop now? Yes. Did you really travel a long, long way just to see me? Yes. David, why did you run away from me? Because you looked so strange. What do you mean? I don't know. There was something, something about your eyes. David, look at me. Do you still see the same thing? No. No, I don't. David, we have to get used to each other again. It's been such a long time. I guess so. We used to have lots of fun playing together. We'll do that again. Mother? Yes, David? Do you like me? Oh, David, I love you. Very, very much. More than anything in the whole world. Will you leave me? I mean, ever. Not if you don't want me to. Then you'll stay here? Mm -hmm. I'll stay with you forever and ever. We'll always be together. We'll never be separated. Same boring nonsense. You can have it if you want it. No, no, thanks. But I'll tell you this. I'd like to have seen the Phoenix Tom Tom, or whatever they call the local paper down there. Why? Well, last night, Sheriff Patterson made an official visit here. What has Sheriff Patterson got to do with Phoenix? He had received a teletype from them, reporting the death of Laura Collins. What? Yes. What are you talking about? Well, it seems that the building she lived in burned down. And there was an unrecognizable body in her apartment, and they thought it might have been Laura. Oh, terrible. Well, he asked her some questions, and she said that she hadn't loaned the key to anyone, and that was all the information she was able to give him. That well, must have been an awful shock for her. Yes, she was upset. When did all this happen? Apparently, the day that she arrived here in Collinsport. Then she has no place to go back to. I thought of that, too. I asked her about it, and she said that she hadn't planned to go back to that particular place anyway. She had thought of a better and different place to take David. How can you be so eager to get rid of your son? Now, it's not that at all. It's just that I think it's better for him to be with his natural mother. Now, I make no reflection on you. But, you know, you have your own worries with your own daughter. Have I? Are you aware that she brought Burke Devlin here last night? No. No, oh, she did. He made himself perfectly at home. But what was so disturbing to me was that he had access to Laura at a particular time and I didn't want them to meet. And he definitely used Carolyn to get to Laura. Did he get to her? Well, I fortunately arrived in time. Burke thought it was ten years ago and he was breathing down her neck. I warned him to stay away. It was a very nasty scene. Hello. I hope we're not late for dinner. No. Everything all right? 
Oh, yes, everything is fine. We've just been out for a walk. Glad to hear it. Mother, mm -hmm. do you want to come up to see my room? I would love to see your room. Oh, is there time? Oh, yes, Mrs. Johnson isn't ready yet. Fine, then we'll be right back. Good, I want to show you my special toy. Okay. <laughs> Good job, Vicky. Thank you. How did you get them together? Well, Mrs. Collins and I pre-arranged a, a meeting and I got David there on time. Hmm. And it was as easy as that? No. No, it was actually quite frightening. What do you mean? When David saw his mother, he, he got petrified. And he started to back away toward the edge of the cliff and he slipped and nearly went over, oh. but I pulled him up and he was all right. Well, how did you... Managed to get David and his mother together then? Oh, well, Mrs. Collins broke down and, and David felt very ashamed of himself and he went to her. Well, apparently it was effective. I'm very pleased with the progress. Well, I was afraid that David was going to say the same thing that he said the first time he met his mother. What did he say? He said that she wasn't his real mother. What? Now, Vicky, really, I've asked you not to bring up that nonsense again. I'm sorry, Roger. Well, what would make him say a thing like that? Well, he just didn't recognize her. It's as simple as that, and it's unimportant. That's why I asked Vicky to forget it. It's not an easy thing to forget. David's a very sensitive and intuitive boy. I can't imagine what would make him say a thing like that. dessert left. I'm afraid not. <clears throat> well, you haven't, you haven't eaten, eaten very... No, I was about to say the same thing. I haven't touched your food. Well, I just wasn't very hungry. Well, remind me to give Mrs. Johnson an up-to-date cookbook. Yeah, we should have had <laughs> hamburgers. I thought you were going to say hot dogs. Can I be excused? Yes, David. Shall we go inside before she serves us another course? <laughs> Laura, may I speak to you a moment? Yes, of course. 